Good morning. Oh, hello, Honky Tonks. How are you? Nice to see you. Have you seen something you fancy, sir? Yes, I'm fascinated by that tall boy in there. Oh, you mean the one with the brass handle? No, you silly thing. The one behind the counter with the ginger moustache. <laughs> Good to see you. Another <laughs> 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 flag day? Yes, it's in aid of the poor and needy. Jolly good. Do you often do this sort of thing? No, it's my first time. I'm very shy. Only my boyfriend said I should do it because it's in a good cause. Ah, he put his finger on your soft spot, did he? <laughs> well, you can't go through life without having some fellow feeling. <laughs> oh, awful. <laughs> but I like you. He wasn't applauding, dear. He was keeping his circulation going. <laughs> My God, what a dump. <clears throat> Thora, dear. Thora. <laughs> Give it a nudge, dear, will you? Thora, dear. <laughs> take five, dear. Take five. No, no, not bows, dear. Go and uh, take five, dear. <laughs> There's no rush. <laughs> Poor old soul. Yes. One day I think she's going to slip away in the unfinished symphony and we won't know she's gone, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Whoever thought I'd come to this? Me with my talent. <laughs> a living. Call this a living. The only custom we ever had was when the curtains caught fire and three firemen rushed in. <laughs> oh, well, sometimes they're appreciative. You must admit that. Yes. After all, we had a request from that drunk the other night. Yes. And if I'd been a flute player, I could have complied with it. <laughs> well, of course, I know this isn't what you're used to. Oh, no. I mean, you've had classical training, haven't oh, you? Oh, yes, yes. I've studied under the best. Kubelik, Yehudim and Nguyen. Ted Ray, all of them. How did you get on with your hoodie? Well, he always used to lose his temper because I couldn't get the cello under my chin, dear. Well, of course, you know, I wouldn't be working in a place like this if it wasn't for jealousy. Oh, really? Mm. It was Sir Thomas Beecham. Oh. He never liked me. Oh, he played me a dirty trick, he did. Sir Thomas? Whatever did he do, dear? He deliberately gave me the wrong date for a concert at the Albert Hall. I turned up there at eight o'clock, and by five past, I was in the ring fighting for my life with Rocky Marciano. <laughs> yes, of course, he was a very odd man. I remember one afternoon at rehearsals, he looked up at me and he said, Gilda, 
because that's my middle name. <laughs> he said, Gilda, I said, do you play any other instrument? I said, yes, sir, Sir Thomas. I said, I play the mouth organ. He said, with a gob like that, it should have been a church organ. <laughs> I mean, you've been right to the top, haven't oh, you? Yes. I mean, yes. you've been in the big time. Oh, yes. I've toured the world dozens of times. Oh, yes. Lucky thing. Mm. Yes. I met my first husband in America, you know. He was a pig farmer. A pig farmer? Yes. He fell for me like a ton of bricks. Oh. <laughs> How romantic. Well, it wasn't really, dear. It was my legs he was after. How do you mean? Well, you know, when you've been playing one of these things for about 20 years, one of these, your legs go a bit like that. <laughs> and he used to drive his pigs through my legs. <laughs> and when they touched the sides, they were ready for market. What happened? Was there a divorce? No, I lost him. Oh, dear. Yes, he was gambling mad, you know. Could never refuse a bet. Do you know, one day a friend of his bet, bet him $50 he couldn't jump off the Empire State Building. Oh, but that's impossible. I mean, it's over a thousand feet high. Yes, he was doing very well, though. He was winning right up to the last foot. <laughs> You got married again, though. Oh, yes, yes. My second husband, what a darling little man he was. Oh. Uh, he was a musician, you know, like we are. Oh, what yes. instrument did he play? He played the big cymbals in the Philharmonic, dear. Oh. <laughs> it was tragic the way he went, though. <laughs> I blame myself, really. Why? What happened? <laughs> well, he was bashing away at the Willem Tell overture one night and... You know, like that. <laughs> and I was in the audience, you see, and I waved to him like that, you see. He was going like this. And he smiled and nodded, you see. <laughs> oh, how dreadful. Yes, they buried him in a coffin shaped like a cricket bat. Ah, <laughs> uh, Thoris Bat, dear. Well, I suppose we'd better give the Belle of New York a mangling. After three, dear. One, two, three. What's this? What? Just a minute, dear, just a minute. What's the meaning of this? This is a jukebox. Oh, dear. And that should tell you something. That thing will never replace live music. What makes you think you lot are alive? <laughs> anyway, you're fired. You're making absolutely no impression on this place. Well, I'm about to make a big impression on you, so there. And uh, this is the living room. We're frightfully proud of this. Should be. Who'd have thought that 18 months ago this was a pump room of a disused sewage farm? <laughs> you know, we call it Pump Room Cottage. <laughs> yes. Well, I must apologise to you and your lady wife, Mr Braintree, for intruding on your little retreat. But you do understand the council can't go lashing out improvement grants of £750 before they've had a shift to see if the work's been done proper. That's right. £750 is a lot of money. All right, Sid, I'll handle this. <laughs> we quite understand. We only hope that our little efforts will uh, qualify for the grant. Oh, I don't think we have no need to fear, sir. After what we've seen, we're doubly impressed. Doubly impressed. <laughs> yes, well, now... Yeah. Although we did tell you there wasn't any plumbing behind there. Yeah. Yeah, look. <laughs> look at that. One primer, two undercoats and a top coat. <laughs> Full marks, sir. Full marks. <laughs> Wait a minute, don't I know you two? Work in men's clubs? No, not us. Oh, funny that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I like that. That's very uh, nice, that is. Yes. Oh, I am glad you like that because yes. uh, I built that myself. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, it's very nice. Sid? Sid! Come over that, lad. Real Sussex stone, that is. Um, uh, York stone, actually. <laughs> York stone, York. he says. <laughs> <laughs> York stone! <laughs> How long have I been in the building trade, Sid? I don't know. I only joined last week. 30 years! 30 years, lad. That lot never came down the M1. <laughs> no, I know Sussex stone, sir. Yes, I'll prove it to you. Give me your hammer a minute. Is that a sort of ring to it? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a real bit of uh, York stone, sir. Yes, you're quite right. <laughs> that 
that, isn't you? <laughs> yes, you recognise them, Sid. No. Yes, they're on that children's programme. You know, they follow the Wombles, the cheerful chuckles. <laughs> they follow the Wombles? That's right. Oh, <laughs> jolly clever of you to recognise us, really. <laughs> what made you twig? <laughs> well, it's that soppy, moronic laugh you've got, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, uh... Have you ever, uh, have you ever met the... Do you mean to say that great uh, Uncle Bulgaria is just a normal bloke, just like Sid and I, huh? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Who'd have thought that? I shall have to try and keep it from the wife, you know. <laughs> wall! <laughs> Look at the wall! Oh, yes. I never noticed that. <laughs> I never noticed that when I came in. I just thought, why? Do you mind if I make a little addition to that? Yes, I can. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. That brings that out a treat. <laughs> well, Mr. and Mrs. Braintree, I've seen quite enough, actually. Oh, you've, uh, you've reached your decision. Yes, I... Oh, come out of it, will you? Yes, and on behalf of the council, I have great pleasure in handing you this cheque for £750. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> With the council's apologies, sir. What is it? A demolition order. <laughs> a demolition order? That's right, a demolition a order. A demolition order. That's right, Sid, a demolition order. You've got your point, yes, sir. That's what made all the England great lad, the British sense of humour. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was telling you about this geezer who took his missus to see Gone with the Wind. He said it was the longest time they've been alone together since their honeymoon. <laughs> I've heard it. <laughs> Can't win them all. Good night. Good night, Tom. Oh, there we are. Bill, huh? All right, we got your message, so we're here. Yes, and whatever you say, it's only your word against Dad's. What's the matter with you two? You said you wanted us to come round here because you've got something to tell us about the old man. So I have. I found out today that old Jim Lampwick has been using this pub regularly as clockwork for 60 years. So what do you want from us? A letter of apology? Now, let me tell you. <laughs> I was going through some of my old dad's papers the other night, and I found this. It's the old man's writing. <laughs> September 1914. Goodness. <laughs> I, Gunnar Lampwick, owe the landlord of the Spread Eagle with a sum of four and threepence eightpenny, being the cost of standing around a drinks to all the customers before departing for France, honour and glory. <laughs> Let the dirty un beware, the Kaiser shout and scream, we'll have his guts for garters, God save the King and Queen. <laughs> Signed J. Lampwick, September 1914. I think that's marvellous. So do I. It's the last round of drinks he ever bought. <laughs> Even then he never paid for them. <laughs> oh, he's quite a character, you know. Well, what did you ask us to come round for, Reg? Well, I happened to show that I owe you to a mate of mine who works on a local paper. He thought it would make a nice little story. So he's popping in later to interview your dad and take his picture. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. And I thought you two would like to be here when I made the presentation. Well, uh, what presentation? Well, the brewery have authorised me to hand a dear old fella 25 quid as a token of gratitude for his continuing custom and loyalty. Oh, he will be pleased. Yeah. And stoned out of his mind by half past ten. Come on, look. <laughs> Bring up, darling. Let's go and get the mattress on the sitting oh, room floor. Oh, Ernie. He'll never make it upstairs tonight, I'll tell you that. And keep your hands to yourself in future. Otherwise, I'll give you a clip round the flipping ear hole. <laughs> Flaming sauce. Now, what's up, Dad? Well, I'm standing on the curb minding my own business when this rotten little boy scout insists on taking me across the road. Well, well, I think that was very nice of you. Oh, no, it wasn't. I was already on this side. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's he doing here? Why isn't he at home writing poison pen letters to the neighbours like he usually is? Here are, old timer. There's your pint. Oh, thank you, Reginald, me old son. Here you are. Not that five franc piece again now, Jim. Hey. Ho oh. <laughs> 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 from. <laughs> you ought to know you've had it back from the loan club four times. <laughs> hey, I'm it. Cheers. What's the matter? Your water rate's gone up, have they? <laughs> you couldn't blame a knack for that. Ah, uh, no need to be like that. Especially as something's going to happen in this pub tonight. It's never happened here before. Well, what are you going to do? Change your shirt, are you? <laughs> <laughs> do 
on, put one on him. Go on, go on, go on. No, 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 no. It's got to do with you, Jim. Oh, it yeah. concerns that piece of paper. That's not my signature. Now, come on, don't be ridiculous. Everybody knows your handwriting, and that's four and thruppence open to you owe him. No, oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. In all the 60 years I've been coming to this boozer, your dad never brought that little matter up. But you, you misbegotten, money-grubbing, son of an honest man... Dad, that's enough of that. You couldn't wait to shame me in front of my beloved daughter and that layabout husband of hers? <laughs> You've left out RAF Pufta. I don't have to say it. I don't have to look at you. Now, listen, yeah. I wanted you to have a look at that date on there. It shows you've been in coming to this pub for 60 years. Oh, that proves that I'm a flaming idiot. And I've got a newspaper man coming round here tonight to celebrate the occasion by taking your picture. And after 60 years of drinking your lousy pig spill, it's a miracle he doesn't have to dig me up to do it. <laughs> Why don't you shut up and listen to Wrench? You're nothing but a bad-tempered old devil. You see, it all started this morning when I beat him to the sugar puffs. And I nicked his plastic lunar bug. Well, <laughs> I wanted that one to complete my space port. Uh, why I bother with a cantankerous old basket like you, I'll never know. You're nothing but a troublemaker. Oh, am I? Well, I'll tell you something. You've just lost your oldest regular. That's what you've done. I'll take my custom to a pub where I'm appreciated. Right here. Perhaps you can find one that don't know about that five franc piece, eh? Yes, I'll go to a pub where the missus don't have to wash her smalls in the bit and to put her head on it. Damn! <laughs> all right, all right, go on, walk out of here as soon as you like. But before you go, I want you to know something. The brewers, out of the goodness of their art, and in consideration of your continuing custom and loyalty, had asked me to give you 25 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my wicked evil tongue, eh? <laughs> I read it on me old son, you know, sometimes a man of my old age don't know what he's saying, you mm, see. He knows what he's saying now, all right. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit too late, isn't it? You just informed me you're no longer a regular. Oh, you can't do that. That's from the brewery, not you. Oh, you shall have it, but not until you settle my account. Oh, all right, four and three was eight. Yes, all right, take it out to 25. I nickel. intend to. And taking into consideration the change in the value of the money and the fact that it's been on the slate for 60 years, that form from Satan amounts to exactly 20 quid, leaving you a fiver. Why, you... Well, it's you... your own fault, Dad. I should take the fiver while you've got the chance. Yeah, sure There's right. one other small stipulation. The brewers requested that out of the money, you should buy a drink for every customer in the pub at the time of presentation. Agreed? <coughs> Agreed. <laughs> Drinks all round. Good. Right. We'll like to bring a coach party in, Governor. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, bring it on, mate. Yeah. Bring it all in. I am laid to rest. I thought the flowers were beautiful. Poor Uncle Billy. To go like that. So unexpectedly. He was 98, dear. <laughs> now, that just leaves the two of us. The last of the Frobishes. There, there, you mustn't upset yourself. There's a great many years left in me yet. It'll be a long time before you're alone. Oh, I do hope so, Aunt Amelia. I do pray that you're right. <clears throat> Would you like me to bring you some tea, madam? No, thank you, Doris. I'm going to my room. It's time for my nap. Yes, that's right, Auntie. We must try to carry on as usual. <laughs> tea for you, Miss Gillian. Oh, I couldn't face it. I'll see you at dinner, dear. There's a Mr. Partridge here to see you, miss. He says you're expecting him. Uh, yes, show him in, please, Doris. Mr. Partridge, miss. <laughs> miss Frobisher. Yes? May I offer my condolences on your recent sad bereavement? <laughs> That's very kind of you. That'll be all. Thank you, Doris. 
Do sit down, Mr. Partridge. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, I understand you wish to avail yourself of my services. Yes. Yes, that is so. Tell me where you recommend it to us. Yes, by an old school friend, uh, Mrs. Jennifer Heathcliff. Oh, yes, I remember the case. A very attractive, wealthy young widow. I was able to give her complete satisfaction. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know. She, she told me in confidence. She said you did it quite beautifully. <laughs> well, we aim to please. Is there any particular way you want me to do it? I'll leave that to you. And do you prefer it during the day or at night? <laughs> well, perhaps it might be better if you crept in and did it while I'm in bed. <laughs> and then I wouldn't know anything about it until the morning. Yes. Some of my clients like it that way. <laughs> now, do you want me to get it all over quickly or shall I make it laugh? <laughs> oh, really, is this necessary? I find it rather embarrassing. All I want you to do is kill Aunt Amelia. Shh! <laughs> is a word we do not use in the Partridge Removal Company, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not used to this sort of thing. Oh, it's your first time, is it? Yes. Oh, well, then, for the sake of business, I hope it won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we go any farther, I'm afraid we've got to deal with the rather sordid aspect of these negotiations, my fee. Yes. Well, when Uncle Billy died, he left his money to be equally divided between Aunt Amelia and me. And whichever one of us survives the other gets the lot. Ah, yes. The classic will, yes. I sent four boys to Eton on that one. <laughs> Have you any idea how much? Oh, only the very vaguest. £129,422.18. Oh, quite respectable. Each. Oh. My own remuneration. I was thinking of 10%. 10%? Good. Let us have a look at the catalogue. Now, let me see. Assassination. Asphyxiation. Bludgeoning. Choking. Ah, oh, here's a good one. How about drowning? Does the lady in question water ski? The lady in question is 75. Oh, what a pity. That rules out my patent exploding... Mackerel. <laughs> oh, let's have a look at the ease here. Uh, execution. Oh, how about exaltation? Exaltation? Mm. I'm sorry, I don't quite... How does it work? Extremely well with ladies of mature years. A rapturous ten days in the south of France in the company of a very virile all-in wrestler and boom! <laughs> what a way to go. <laughs> Certainly not. That sort of thing would never appeal to Aunt Amelia. Oh, well. Mind you, if I'm ever contemplating suicide, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, nil desperandum. We have by no means exhausted our resources. Ah! <laughs> no, she has a heart like a Hereford bull. Oh, pity, pity. Think again, Partridge. Um, how do you feel about poison? Oh, I can take it or leave it. Take oh. it or... <laughs> 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 oh, yes, yes, yes. I was referring to the good old cyanide stamp. One lick does... He never writes letters. No, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, ah, here we are. Now, then, this is the... This is the partridge whoopee cushion. <laughs> you all die laughing. How does that work? Well, does your aunt have a favourite chair? Oh, yes, that one. Oh, well, come over here and I'll show you how it works. Now, you merely place the article under a normal cushion, so, and as the posterior descends on the detonator, hey presto, her bum goes boo! <laughs> That's marvellous. It appeals to my sense of humour. And what's more, I can be having tea with the vicar when it happens. Exactly. I'll take it. Oh, good. Will you, you will just sign the contract? A contract? Oh, must I? Well, it's more of a confession, really. We have a motto, one up it, all up it. <laughs> Where do I sign? Just over a stamp here. Yeah. There you are. Right. Oh, you didn't. I did. But why? I offered you 10%. My dear young lady, your Aunt Amelia offered 15. <laughs> <laughs> Hot 
Ostrich, old boy. You're a genius. <laughs> You're watching UK TV Drama Daytime. Stay with us for more of your favourites.